hello students today we will discuss another section of this chapter that is uh, land resources as you know uh, in last lecture we have discussed the uh, one half of this uh, chapter that is the resources and classification of resources and conservation the another section of this chapter is the land resources which we have to discuss today you know land is most important resource various activities are done on this land land is most important because soil is formed on the top of these rocks rock is main base for the formation of the soil on which various agricultural activities are performing throughout india you know there are various types of soils in india on which different types of crops are grown this is possible by the land resources land resource is the medium for the various kinds of plants trees and other vegetation land resource it supports the human life the life has been comfortable because in modern times with the help of technology various kinds of resources have been extracted from the land resources likewise there are different kinds of metals and some non metallic resources which are very essential for the manufacturing of modern tools and techniques likewise there is aluminum one metal which is used for the different uh, things like uh, aeroplane through which uh, we can reach to the destinations in a very less time this is the today's topic on which we have to discuss various aspects related to this land resource it is most important it is uh, one of the important resource as we have discussed there are various kinds of resources like renewable non renewable resources in first section in first section we have discussed uh, classification of resources from them land is one of the resource or natural resource or renewable resource on which various activities are performing uh economic activities likewise uh, primary activity secondary activity tertiary activity but the base of all these activities are is on land resources land resource on which agricultural activities are done means there are re related industries which are known as agro based industries and minerals which we extract from the land resource they are referred as the mineral based industries industries they depend on the resources or the sources which we extract from the land one is from the agricultural sector another is from the minerals on the on the basis of these two things industries have been classified agro based industries and mineral based industries they are directly related to this land resource now in india there are various land forms or features as you have discussed in a previous class that is in ninth class uh, physical divisions of india one physical division that is known as mountain second that is plains third plateaus with the help of this map you can understand uh 
this is the outline map of India. You can uh, see here, this is uh, the first feature of land resources which are known as mountains or Himalayas of India. Himalayas, below Himalayas, there is another landform which is known as plains or northern plains of India. Below plains, there is one triangular part that is plateau, plateau or peninsular plateau. These three landforms are most important separately. Number one, Himalayas. So far as land uh, resources of India are concerned, Himalayas constitute 30 percent, Northern Plains constitute 43 percent and last one that is Plateau, it constitutes 27 percent. How these three landforms or physical divisions considered as the resources or important resources? You see here, mountains, on the highest mountains, you know uh, a sentence, the higher we go, the cooler it is. These Himalayas, they have the high altitudes or it is the uh, physical feature which has high altitude as that of plains, as that of plateau region. These uh, Himalayas or these Himalayan ranges have the high altitude. When we go higher reaches, these highest Himalayan peaks are covered with glacier or snow. This snow occurs particularly during the winter season because in winter season the temperature is very, very low. Uh, during summers, when temperature starts rising, these glaciers and snow starts melting. We can say that these Himalayas are the sources of what? These are the sources of pure water which is melting from the highest Himalayas into these uh, rivers and the various streams. These Himalayas are rich in water resources, they are rich in forests, they are rich in wildlife. Wild life. These are the three uh, main or most important resources which we check here on the Himalayan mountains. Because uh, water is most important resource, uh, Himalayas is the main source of these water resources. These Himalayan rivers are also known as perennial rivers because the water flows uh, in these rivers throughout the year. Number two, him, uh, plains. Plains are also considered as one of the land resources in India because uh, these plains provide us agricultural land, agricultural land. As I already told you, uh, it is that land on which uh, various agricultural activities are done, uh, different crops are cultivated here. Why? Because uh, through these plains, one river is uh, draining there, that is river Ganga and its tributaries. Due to this river, the soil has become fertile on both the sides. Uh, there, uh, there is particularly the alluvial soil which is uh, rich in humus and other inorganic substances. That is why most of the agricultural activities are performing here. In plains, uh, there is a large quantity of water, uh, there is fertile soil. That is why most of the people prefer to live in this section, in this region. Uh, because there are such uh, accessibilities or uh, such things through which, uh, uh, through which life has become comfortable. In, in Himalayan regions, uh, people does not prefer to live there because there are the harsh climatic conditions. Same is the case in the southern part. Uh, there is not fertile soil and uh, in northern plains, it is the main factor that uh, there is fertile soil in which most of the people are 
preferring to live there in West Bengal and Uttar Pradesh, uh, Bihar, these are such states which have the high density of population. Number three, Plato, this third land uh, resource of India is considered as a resource because it is rich in, it is rich in mineral resources, mineral resources. Uh, particularly this uh, Maharashtra region uh, in which the black soil is found there, black soil, uh, black soil has the volcanic origin. Black soil is formed due to the volcanic eruption. This region is uh, formed by the volcanic eruption. You know, the core of the earth is composed of, uh, made of uh, iron and nickel. When it, is, when it was a volcanic eruption in previous times, here, uh, you can say that, we can say that, that here it would be the largest quantity of minerals found here because it has the volcanic origin. Uh, that magma which comes from the core of the earth which has the high concentration of iron and nickel. That nickel and iron would be mostly found here and other states and uh, iron would be, iron is found here and petroleum which is found in Assam, Mumbai high. It is also uh, considered as the uh, one of the land resource because it is rich in mineral resources. In general, we can say that uh, all of these resources, all of these uh, features of India are rich in resources because they have their own importance. Himalayas, they, it has its importance because it is rich in water resources and uh, water is not found in large quantity in Palatu region because here are the rivers which are known as peninsular uh, rivers. Uh, water in those rivers uh, is found mostly in the rainy season time. Uh, that was the uh, one introductory part of these land resources we will move forward. That is the uh, land use pattern. Land use. Land use. And land use pattern. Land use pattern. Uh, you know, land use uh, simply refer to land which is used in uh, various purposes. Land use pattern means uh, land which is used same in various purposes for the uh, various utilizations are performed or uh, when we uh, get the data of different uses of uh, land uh, utilization that will become the land use pattern. In land use, it is simply the definition that uh, land is land which is used for the uh, various purposes. But we, we, will, we are not uh, giving the examples here. It is simply the definition uh, what is land use. Land use means when land is used for the different purposes. But here is the pattern. But we have to give the data and we have to give the percentage separately of each and every purpose. Uh, what are the different purposes uh, in which the land has been used in India? Likewise, number one, forests. This is the first purpose or it is the land, it is one piece of land which is reserved for the forests. Number two, barren and wasteland. barren and wasteland. Number third, non-agricultural land, non-agricultural land. Number four, permanent pastures, permanent pastures, pastures, number five, tree crops, tree crops and number six 
is the cultivable cultivable wasteland number 7 number 7 other than current fellow other than current fellow and uh, eighth is current fellow current fellow current fellow land and last one is ninth that is uh, net zone area net zone area these are the nine purposes of the land utilization you can check here some land which is reserved for the forests it is that land which is reserved for the growing of trees second it is barren land which is reserved for which is a uh, rocky and desert land it can uh, it can not be utilized because it is rocky land people doesn't prefer to live there and it is the desert area where there is water scarcity people have the need of water people cannot uh, move in this side in this region because there are some uh, resources which are lacking there but barren and uh, this wasteland can be converted into agricultural land when there would be the availability of irrigation the percentage of this barren and wasteland would be decreased and it is the good point that and it is the advantage that uh, when barren land and wasteland would be should be decreased that it should be converted into agricultural land number 3 non agricultural land once this land was used for agricultural purposes but today this land is not used for agriculture it has been utilized or it has been used for the construction of roads for the construction of railways for the construction of industries but we can say that this is uh, this is uh, not the, this is not imp, uh, this is harmful for the environment this is harmful for the environment because day by day we have to cut these forests for the construction of these uh, roads and there is uh, agricultural land on which different types of crops were grown and such land is converted into non agricultural land it is not uh, it is not good point here that uh, we are uh, converting such valuable land into non agricultural land permanent pastures permanent pastures are uh, those uh, pieces of land which are reserved for the grazing in this patch of land there are the grasses grown tree crops it is that patch of land which is reserved for the tree crops tree crops means there are the fruit trees apple tree pear uh, mango banana these are such pieces of land on which these fruit trees are cultivated now these 3 6 7 and 8 it is actually the fallow land it is fallow land fallow land what is fallow land it is that land which is left uncultivated which is left uncultivated for some time why when we cultivate any type of crop on land continuously year after year the fertility of the land starts decreasing day by day when we left that piece of land we cannot utilize it for some time it means that it can regain it is fertility again that is the fallow land but there are a certain time periods on which we are left it uncultivated number 1 is a uh, cultivable wasteland cultivable wasteland is that land which is left uncultivated more than 5 years it is left uncultivated more than 
5 years and these two uh, types that is other than color, current fellow and fellow land these are left un uncultivated one year or less than one year this is the time period otherwise these are the same types which are which are which is known as the fellow land fellow land means left, uh, land which is cultivated which is left uncultivated which is not cultivated for some time why in order to regain its fertility cultivable land and other than current fellow and current fellow these are the types of fellow land because they are left for uncultivated for some time uh, uh, cultivable wasteland it is left uh, uncultivated for more than five years and these two seven and eight uh, are left uncultivated one year or less than one year now we will move towards another that is uh, net zone area net zone area with net zone area there is another term joined which is known as grass cropped area one is net zone area another is grass cropped area what is the difference between them net zone area it is that land which is cultivated once in a year it is land which is which is cultivated cultivated once in a year it means that we will give here one example here is a farmer who is cultivate who has one hectare of land he has one hectare of land he is cultivating one crop per year per year it means that one farmer has one hectare of land he is cultivating one crop in one year it means that it is net sown area how it will become grass cropped area definition is here land which is which is cultivated cultivated more than once in a year more than once in a year here is same farmer who has one hectare of land one hectare of land but in net zone area he was cultivating only one crop per year but here he is cultivating more than one crop more than one crop more than one crop per year per year it means that he needs three hectares of land for cultivating three crops but he takes the advantage of cultivating these three crops in only one hectare this is when we uh, check it in a large scale when we observe it in a large scale india has net zone area of about 46 46.24 46.24 percent net zone area when it would be converted into grass cropped area it means that if it is net zone area we can say that in that land in this percentage we are cultivating only one crop per year in this large uh, scale of land when it would be grass cropped area means this area would be multiplied by three or two crops it means that it will become at the time grass cropped area here is a simple example through which you can understand net zone area means that a farmer has one hectare of land he is cultivating one crop per year in grass cropped area same one hectare of land and in that one hectare of land he is cultivating more than one crop means he is cultivating one two or three crops means rice wheat and sugarcane etc in the same year at the time he needs three hectares of land for the cultivating of three crops but he takes the advantage of this one hectare this one one hectare this one one hectare becomes this one hectare becomes the grass cropped area 
uh, here one crop per year is net zone area one uh, one uh, one in one hectare one crop per year is net zone area one crop and more crops which are cultivated per year becomes the gross crop area this was the difference between these two now we will move towards the land degradation and land conservation land degradation land degradation and land conservation land conservation now land degradation land degradation means when the quality of the land would be degraded or spoiled through various activities you know humans uh, human beings are not using this land in a proper way they are using they are taking wrong steps to utilize this land in what ways this land is degraded i will give you some examples through which you can understand how land is degraded in india number 1 when we irrigate more land when we irrigate more land there in soil in rocks rocks are rocks have some concentration of sodium chloride this sodium chloride is not important for the soil it means that the salinity and alkalinity of the soil would be increased soil should be fertile but when we add more fertilizers to the soil it means that soil become acidic the soil is degraded at the time the quality of the soil is degraded what does it mean that it is the greediness we want more production uh, from the soil from the crops but on the other side we are degrading the quality of the soil you have understood now proper irrigation proper utilization or utilization or use of fertilizers in a land will not degrade the land quality when we add more such resources in that land resource at the time it will degrade the quality of the land these these will become the causes of causes of land degradation land degradation this was the this uh, these were the two examples which i give you there are various uh, causes through which land is degraded means more irrigation more irrigation more irrigation and uh, over use of fertilizers over use of over use of fertilizers fertilizers and there are various causes through which land is degraded you, uh, you know there are various industries uh, through which they are throwing the chemicals on the soil on the land and the quality of the land at the time would be decreased uh, cement industries from uh, this uh, cement which contains the calcium carbonate and it is added uh, with the soil you know uh, when uh, there would be some cement in uh in a bag when we apply water in that in next day, day you can check that that cement uh, that cement has uh, become very hard likewise when this cement is uh, added day by day in that area where in the, these cement industries are found when irrigation would be done at the time in those areas that cement which is found there would be uh, same activity done which i have given here means when we apply some water to the cement in a bag that cement becomes very hard this is uh, this is the 
wrong method through which uh, these industries have spoiled the quality of land. Cement industry should have in our society, but it should be in those areas where there are no agricultural land, there are uh, uh, there are not such habitations where people are people are living. Means uh, people, uh, the human's respiratory system is at that time affected because respiration uh, respiratory uh, system is affected by these uh, pollutants which are thrown thrown by these uh, industries into the atmosphere and other resources. Now we will uh, check here that. Uh, this was the uh, cause of land degradation uh, through which uh, one is irrigation, more irrigation, more use of fertilizers by throwing these wastes and chemicals on the land and uh, one cause is deforestation, 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 overgrazing, overgrazing. Over grazing. These are such methods through which uh, the land quality has been degraded. When we here uh, give an example, uh, we will uh, take this uh, process that is deforestation. It means that we are uh, cutting more and more trees through which uh, land is exposed during the heavy rainfall. The whole land is um, washed down. Uh, and the same is example here over grazing. When over grazing means cattle are allowed to graze, uh, such grasses means same land would be exposed through which when it would be heavy rainfall at the time same procedure would be followed the whole soil would be washed down which is known as leaching off in a uh, whole uh, the nutrients uh, in organ organic and inorganic substances uh, which that soil contains uh, has loose uh, in that way uh, that is the degradation of uh, uh, mining uh, the land in which my, uh, these minerals are found, when it is uh, the extraction of minerals, the land becomes rough and uh, becomes very loose. When it is same rainfall, this heavy rainfall washed down uh, again, this whole land towards the downside of these hills or that area. Uh, as I already told you, industrial effluents and uh, water logging, this is water logging. When the water remains for more time in that agricultural land, uh, that increases the salinity and alkalinity. Industrial dust, as I already told you, municipal, municipal wastes and uh, running water is the main agent of this land degradation, water uh, overgrazing, deforestation and mining. These are such causes through which land has been degraded. Now we will check here uh, how much land in India has been degraded. That is 130 million, million hectares of land has been degraded. This is the uh, 130 out of the total area, 2.3 million square kilometers, that is 130 million hectares of land in India has been degraded. Now there are various uh, causes as I discussed here. First is uh, degraded forests, degraded forests, that is this uh, forest land that is 28 percent of land has been degraded by this process. Second is water eroded area, uh, water eroded area that is here fifth running water, running water, running water. Due to this running water land has been de uh, degraded that is 56 percent, 56 percent and uh, soil becomes uh, saline and alkaline that is 6 percent here due to this 6 percent more irrigation, 6 percent and wind eroded area that is sixth one due to wind land has been degraded. Uh, it is particularly seen in desert areas where there are sand dunes, they are, they are always shifting from one place to another place uh, by the force of the wind. It includes the 10 percent of uh, 10 percent, 10 percent uh, land which has been degraded by this uh, method. Now we can say that uh, these are the uh, percentages through which I here on the board. Uh, 6 percent, 28 percent due to the deforestation, 56 percent running water and 10 percent uh, through the wind. It becomes the 130, uh, 130 million hectares uh, in which the land of India has been degraded. Now uh, we will 
check out the preventive measures or uh, precautionary measures through which land would be conserved. land conservation land conservation now we have seen that uh, land has been degraded by various uh, causes or methods through which we have to check out the uh, various conservative measures through which land would be protected number one which we have seen that uh, uh, large uh, Quantity of land in India has been degraded through various processes as deforestation, as more irrigation through which the land has become saline and uh, alkaline. In that way, we can check here what are the conservative measures through which land would be protected. Afforestation and reforestation. Afforestation means we will grow more and more trees in that area where trees are not found. Reforestation means same method growing of trees but in that area where deforestation has took place. These are the uh, afforestation methods, second is shelter belts in desert areas, trees would be grown in a one row. Uh, uh, because uh, due to this uh, force of wind would be reduced in uh, desert areas, uh, thorny bushes and uh, such uh, deep rooted uh, plants would be grown in uh, desert areas through which the soil would be stable that cannot be moving always from one uh, place to another place growing up thorny bushes in desert areas and uh, we should dump such wastes which will be thrown from the industries properly and we will use water in agricultural lands in a proper way because more land that is uh, water logging water logging leads to the more uh, salt and your soil becomes alkaline and uh, we control on overgrazing and we will not allow such people to allow these cattle population for the grazing and lastly that mining processes through which land becomes exposed and it becomes loose through heavy rainfall that whole area is washed down. These are such areas we have to control on mining uh, through which uh, this uh, land would be conserved. This was the uh, all about land resources. Now we will move towards the another subtopic that is soil. Soil. What is soil? Soil is the uppermost layer of the earth's crust or particularly crust. This soil, the science which deals with the study of soil is known as pedology. Pedology. It is the science which deals with the study of soils and soil is the uppermost layer of the earth. It is the medium for the various kinds of trees and uh, when there are trees, when there are in biological terminology, when there are autotrophs then heterotrophs can be survived. This is the, uh, this is the medium for the various kinds of trees. Uh, these trees are very important for us because uh, various activities are done by those trees that is our construction purposes, our furniture and other aspects are related to these forests. Uh, soil, soil formation and uh, soil types, we will discuss these. Uh, first of all, uh, how soil is formed. Soil is formed by the parent rocks in areas which contain the rocks. That rock become the uh, basement for the, uh, for the formation of the soil. There are actually uh, two, uh, three methods particularly. That is weathering. Weathering is the weathering is the breaking down of rocks into small, small or small particles. And uh, another is erosion. Erosion is the secondary method. When uh, weathering will be done, erosion would be uh, done simultaneously by the various agents. That is glacier, running water, by the wind. These are the different aspects through which this these so small small particles will be transported from the other areas and deposited in other areas uh, through which the organic parts and organic materials are added at the time with these small particles and soil becomes very fertile. Uh, first is a parent rock which is most important uh, for the formation of the soil. There are three uh, types of weathering, uh, physical weathering, chemical weathering and biological weathering. Physical weathering, it includes 
uh, two methods particularly that is thermal action and frost action in desert areas like Rajasthan there uh, is one uh, activity that is thermal action thermal means heat due to heat rocks are exposed and the upper part of the rock is converted into small small sand particles due to cracks when on the surface of the rock due to heat cracks are developed and these cracks day by day are widened and uh, the whole rock would be whole surface rock would be converted into sand when sand would be shifted to the other areas rock is again exposed where time will come and this whole rock would be converted into sand this is one method due to the high temperature that is thermal action thermal action in deserts thermal action second is frost action frost f r o s t frost action frost action is that method of uh, weathering in which uh, due to uh, cold temperature cold climatic conditions particularly in ladakh that is cold uh, desert there uh, when uh, when these uh, uh, when this water during the day time there is some kind of uh, high uh, not high temperature uh, some uh, warm temperature through which this water starts melting and this water starts moving towards the these pores of these rocks during night this water which has entered into the pore of the rock it is converted into ice this ice pushes the two walls of this pore and the upper part of the rock would be converted into small and small particles which is uh, known as the frost action at day time this water this ice would be converted into water this water has the capability to move, uh, to move into the more interior of these pores at night time it will convert it into frost or ice one time will occur when this whole rock due to this process would be converted into small and small sand particles this is the formation of the soil chemical weathering in chemical weathering there are the solutions formed you know calcium carbonate and uh, other salts magnesium and sodium salts and other salts are dissolved with the water you can check those uh, rocks which contain sodium chloride and other salts when water is uh, when water acts upon those rocks and you can check the whole rock would be dissolved with the rock you cannot see that rock which you have seen uh, previously but that rock you cannot seen in the next day because the whole rock was converted into solution chemical there was chemical reaction uh, taken place by the water which was a reactant at the time you have seen the caves uh, in different areas of the different in different parts of the country uh, these caves are nothing actually once uh, it was the area which was filled with the calcium carbonate this cal calcium carbonate was uh, dissolved by the interior uh, that is ground water when ground water passed through these rocks the whole area was dissolved and uh, in later cases that uh, becomes a hollow shape and empty shape uh, under the earth that acts as a cave uh, these are such uh, types of erosion uh, such types of uh, weathering which we have seen first is physical second is chemical weathering in chemical weathering solutions are formed in biological weathering it is very simple big trees which have the uh, roots day by day year after year new roots come out and they enter into the rocks and pressurize these rocks and uh, the rock is uh, divided into small and small uh, sand particles year after year in uh, in that manner uh, the big animals the big animals which are uh, traveling on the land like elephant due to his, uh, due to it is heavy weight on the land in that manner the rocks are crashed uh, below uh, below the feet of this elephant this is biological weathering when animals are playing and uh, plants are playing an important role for the uh, converting this soil into smaller and smaller sand particles this was the formation of soil and there are various reasons and there are various uh, causes through which rocks are converted into sand uh, these sand particles first there is rock important and there are the processes important through which uh, this uh, rocks are, these rocks are converted into smaller and smaller sand particles you can see uh, one is weathering and second is the erosion in weathering we have checked the three types for first is physical weathering second is chemical weathering and third is biological weathering now we will move towards the uh, types of soils you know in india there are uh, various types of soils which uh, we understand through this map
this is the outline map of India as usual as I have shown you previously uh, there are various types of soils uh, first one this is soil map soil map number one alluvial soil alluvial soil number two black soil black soil red and yellow soil red and yellow soil number 4 number 4 literate soil literate soil arid soil number 5 arid soil last one that is uh, forest soil or mountain soil forest soil or mountain soil these are six types of soils in india mountain soil uh, with the help of this map we can understand uh, better uh, this patch which you have which i will here drawn these are some this is a uh, level soil this major part which you check here in this part this is alluvial alluvial and this one is black black soil and uh, red and yellow this patch and uh, this patch it is red and yellow red and yellow laterite laterite here is laterite these laterite soils are uh, found in the various corners of the different areas of earth uh, different areas of india here 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 number red soil particularly found in rajasthan area arid soil here and mountain soils and forest soils are particularly found here in Jammu and Kashmir in Himalayan states. Uh, forest soil, forest soil, here is arid soil, this sorry, uh, forest soil, this is arid soil in Rajasthan. Now we will discuss uh, various characteristics of these soils. Alluvial soil which is most important soil in India, widely distributed, very fertile, found in the flood plains uh, of the various rivers and deltas. In alluvial soil, there are uh, two subtypes, Khadr and Bangar. Uh, Khadr is that, uh, uh, Khadr and Bangar both are alluvial soils, but they have uh, some differences. Alluvial soil, ha Khadr soil has uh, small particles and Bangar soil has big particles. Khadr is fertile and Bangar is uh, less fertile. And uh, Khadr is close to the river, Bangar is uh, far away from the river. These are some differences between these. Uh, alluvial soil is better uh, for the cultivation of sugar cane, uh, wheat, rice. These are crops which are grown there. Uh, it is uh, alluvial soil, there is uh, one more important point which you cannot uh, see in other soils. Uh, alluvial soil is most important soil because it is more fertile than other soils. It contains both inorganic and organic substances. Organic means it contains the dead decay material which are converted into humus. And it contains inorganic substances, phosphorus, uh, potassium, calcium carbonate and other uh, lime which is known as lime and lime is calcium carbonate and these are such uh, minerals which are found in particularly in uh, alluvial soil which I have shown on the uh, map. Alluvial soil it is formed by the uh, by the deposition of the various rivers 
that is particularly river Ganga which has deposited the, that soil which has taken from the highest Himalayas and deposited on both the sides on the both flood plains and this soil becomes very fertile, it is rich in humus. Black soil, it is black in color, it is ideal for the cultivation of cotton, it is uh, also known as black cotton soil. It is also known as rugger soil because it is not fertile, it is it has volcanic origin, it is formed by the volcanic eruption and uh, it is now uh, fertility and moisture, fertility, uh, it has a high holding capacity of moisture because uh, uh, black soil during the rainy season becomes very uh, soft, it becomes very soft when it is, uh, it is not rainy season, it is dry climatic conditions that at the time it becomes very hard, it is very difficult to plow and uh, cracks are developed on the surface of this, uh, surface of this black soil. It is mostly found in this uh, Maharashtra region and uh, Gujarat region. Uh, cracks are developed in the soil as I already told you. Red and yellow soils, red and yellow soil, red color is due to the diffusion of the iron. Uh, when iron reacts with oxygen, it is ferric oxide formed. It gives reddish color to the soil. In yellow soil, same, uh, same iron is found. but that iron is at the time of, at the time in the form of dehydrated form. Uh, there is the moisture which is uh, reacting with that same iron. Uh, this iron, that, that iron which is reacting with the water, this water uh, gives color it yellow. That is in both the soils iron is found. In red and yellow soils these are formed uh, due to the disintegration of the metamorphic and igneous rocks you know. It is less fertile presence of iron as I uh, told you, it gives reddish color to the soil and it gives yellow color when it is in dehydrated form. These are the areas like uh, Orissa and Tamil Nadu region, Andhra Pradesh, uh, these are the areas where this red soil is found. Litrite soil, litrite means uh, litrite, uh, it is derived from a word liter which means brick. It is simply example, when we form a brick that is formed from a soil, soil, that soil is first of all soft, it contains water, it has the spaces. When this uh, brick is uh, baked and at the time all the characteristics are loosed. In this, uh, in that manner, this laterite soil uh, lose its all characteristics due to two reasons. One is high temperature. You know the bacteria which are available in the soil when uh, they are mixed with the soil and the, they uh, increase the fertility of the soil. When the running water, when the water is passed on the same soil, laterite soil, all the characteristics are rushed down or washed down which is known as leaching off. Uh, it means that the soil in later on becomes less fertile. In second case, in second case, those bacteria which are found in that or living organisms which are found there which play an important role for, many, for uh, making it fertile. Due to high temperature, such organisms are destroyed. There is uh, no mark remains behind of these bacteria. The result is that it becomes less fertile. But uh, by applying fertilizers, manure and other things in this soil, it becomes fertile. It is mostly seen in Assam and other parts of like here, uh, like Maharashtra and uh, Karnataka, Goa, in these patches where some kind of uh, this uh, preventive measures have been taken that uh, fertilizers, manure and other things have been applied in uh, later cases it becomes fertile and uh, this laterite soil, uh, in this laterite soil tea, coffee and other crops are cultivated. Laterite soil, monsoon climatic conditions are affecting its characteristics, mixture of clay and red, uh, red soil, it is the mixture of clay and red soil, formed as a result of leaching as I already told you, lack in humus, organic matter is not found there because that is already uh, washed down. Number five, fifth, arid soil, it is found in the desert areas, it is uh, saline in nature and uh, it is saline in nature because it contains sodium chloride and uh, texture is uh, and it has sandy texture because its particle size is equal to sand. Uh, because uh, texture varies from 
clay, silt and sand. Sand is the biggest particle and uh, uh, um, below uh, smaller than sand is uh, silt and smaller than silt is clay. Clay is the smallest particle which is found in alluvial soil as I already told you. In the other part that is close to the river there is a uh, clay soil which is found there. In arid soils as I already told you in formation of soil, in formation of soils as I have told you that uh, due to high temperature these rocks are converted into sand particles. And uh, it is less fertile, uh, it is not irrigated because in Rajasthan area you know there is water scarcity and uh, insoluble salts are there. There are conquer and uh, stones are found there, reddish brown in color and it is sandy in texture and salt is found there. And last type that is forest and uh, forest soil and mountain soil. Forest soil is, and mountain soils are found particularly in these Himalayan uh, cities, Jammu and Kashmir, Uttarakhand, uh, Sikkim and Urnachal Pradesh. These are, uh, their fertility also varies from region to region. On the top of this uh, mountain it is less fertile, below it is more fertile. Why? Because the organic uh, parts or uh, dead plants and animals at the higher parts of the mountains are washed down due to the water and these organic parts are settled down below the mountain and sand with mixed sand. Below it is more fertile and uh, at the higher reaches it is less fertile which we can say acidic. And the particle size also varies. At the higher reaches the particle of the mountain soil is are higher. The particle size starts decreasing towards the hillside. Uh, these are found in mountainous areas varied in texture as I already told you loamy and silty in valleys, fertile in valleys. Uh, and last, uh, last and uh, that is soil erosion and soil conservation. Soil erosion is uh, due to the various uh, agents that is running water and uh, running water it is due to the uh, by the force of the winds it is due to the washing of glacier which is uh, eroded from the highest mountain sides. This is the, there are two types of erosion, one is uh, gully erosion, gully erosion and sheet erosion, sheet erosion. Gully erosion took place at the time when the running water makes deep deep channels, such channels are known as gullies and process is known as gully erosion. Sheet erosion, when the water uh, flows in a vast area, vast area, it removes this upper part of the soil like a sheet, it is known as sheet erosion. Now, running water, wind, glaciers, uh, bad methods of farming, deforestation, over uh, grazing, human activities, construction ro of roads, mining and extra are the causes of soil erosion. And methods of conservation and uh, that is afforestation as I already told you in land conservation these are same here uh, friendly farming techniques, contour flowing in higher altitudes in mountains, steps are formed and strip cropping in between the agricultural land there should be the boundary through which water cannot be rushed down into the another uh, patch of land through which all nutrients and fertilizers should be washed down. These are the strips which protect this water in a particular patch of land. Uh, there is a check of erosion and check uh, these uh, uh, shelter belts and uh, we have to uh, make the proper irrigation and uh, proper irrigation because uh, proper irrigation will minimize the uh, soil erosion in that particular land. That was all about which we have discussed here related to the land resources and previously which we have, we have discussed the classification of resources. That's what, that was all about of this uh, whole chapter resources and development. I hope that uh, you have understood all whatever I have discussed here. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, God bless you.